For more tips and tricks, don't forget to hit that button and subscribe. Also, ring the bell so you can get notifications anytime I have new videos. Welcome to Paul's Toolbox. I'm Paul Ricaldi, and today we're going to cover shutters. I'm going to show you how to build your own shutters for your house. Very inexpensive shutters to make. They look great. You have no visible fasteners, and I'm even going to show you a couple of ways to make it super easy. We're going to make a couple of jigs that will set this up to where you just roll right through them. On my last video, I asked people to drop a comment about Realtruck.com. You remember I asked you if you like headlights, taillights, anything that they have, over 300,000 different products. A lot of people drop comments on it, and Real Truck chose two winners for a $250 gift card. Yep, $250 gift card will be sent out to these winners. I'm using one by six cedar tongue and groove board. All right, you can see they lock together, tongue and groove. So when this shrinks, and it may or may not, it depends on how dry it was, but if it does, I won't see a gap right there. I just have a nice little groove where they go together. You can route it to where it laps. I like it lapping better than just butting two boards together because when they shrink, you're gonna see a gap in there. If you, if you lap it, then that way when it shrinks and it's stained, it still looks great. Do not go with a, an interior pine or fir when you're making these because they will rot. You wanna use an exterior wood. That's why I really like cedar. You can use PVC, you can use deck board, anything like that for these shutters. And you're gonna use the same technique that I'm using here. I'm gonna give you guys some tips and tricks. The first one is gonna be with a template. We're gonna make a simple little template that's gonna enable you to just roll these things out. This is seven inches wide. I have a one inch strip. So when I put these together, I glue them, I'm gonna have that space right here, six inches. And I'm across the width of my shutters. Whatever the width of your shutters are, that's what you wanna make this board right here. I'm using 2P10. This is a fast cap glue. It's an instant CA glue that works really well, two part. And this one's a little old. I like to use the thick or the gel. Ooh, I got a good bit on there. So what I'm gonna do is put my glue on one side, Spray this side and put them together. And we'll be ready to roll. I'm gonna to wanna to set this up to where I can make all my cuts real easily. So I'm just gonna take a one by four and they have holes set up in your saw for this. You can take and screw it from the back side over here and attach this board. That way I can put a clamp with a block and I can have all my boards cut the same size real easily. It's easy to go ahead and drill your own holes if they don't have holes. It's aluminum, so you can always put your own. I'm gonna run my cut straight down. This was a scrap piece of wood, so it's not eight feet long, and I need 73 inches on this side of my blade, so I'm gonna back it up and scoot this part over so I can get that distance I need. The good thing is, I have my stand over there that helps me out to hold up that end. So I only need one screw in here. I can lock it in place and measure off my blade. I need three boards. Now I'm gonna take and put my clamp on. I'm using my speed square here. This is one of the most useful tools you'll ever have. That and your tape measure. You can't be without them if you're doing any type of construction. Okay, now I need my 15 inches for my cross members on all of them. Need a good bit of these. You have a bad end, like I said, you want to clean that up real quick. Take a look at all your wood, make sure you got good edges. I'm going to stack these up.
easy street like this. Did you see how easy that was to cut? It only took a few minutes. What I'm gonna do is take a little stain and rub on all these ends. We're gonna put this together. I'm not even gonna glue it. You can if you want, but the boards going across are gonna hold it in place. That way, if anything happens to one of these boards, you can just unscrew it, take it out, pop it right back in. Super simple. I'm using my Retiquit wooden stain. This is weathered wood. You can use any stain you want, but I like this for a number of reasons. The good thing is, it's a water base, easy to clean up. And all I'm doing is putting a little bit right here so it rubs on the face, it's just stain. It ain't... I only need to do two on the shutter because this gets cut off the tongue and this end's gonna get cut off on this one. So I'll just put a little bit there. All of my cross boards, I'm gonna cut both sides so I have a nice flat piece. So we'll start off with just the tongues on all of these, then I'll flip it to cut the other, but first I wanna cut all my long boards. These are 73 inches long, so I'm going to put three slats in between cross members. Um, we'll get the first two, and then we'll work this, the third one. These screws are exterior screws. Don't go right on the edge. Go at least an inch off the edge or three quarters of an inch at least. You don't want to split that wood. We want to get the center of this because we're going to put our middle board in. 74. Divide it in half. 37. The easiest way to get a center of a board is to either use your square or a tape measure. The square I really like to use because it sits on there just where you want it to sit. Now I'll bring this edge over to an even number, six inches. So now I go to three and that's the center of my board, right there. And all I have to do is line this line up with that line. I already put it in the cracks, so if it shrinks, it's going to be covered. You'll see the stain in between there. Now what I'm going to do is, is stamp a little color in this. So I measured my distance from here and here to center it. and then I'll just go wash this off. Now, on my next video, I'm gonna show you how you can remove these and pop them back on super easy. This system that I came up with is gonna enable you to just mount them easily on your wall with no visible fasteners and pull them off anytime you want to paint your house, to pressure wash, or to paint your shutters and not get any paint on your brick. Especially when you have bushes and stuff in the way, it's a lot harder to get in there and cut in next to the brick. But this inexpensive system that I came up with enables you to do just what I said. And all you have to do 
to set them back in place. They are locked in and they're not going anywhere. If you guys don't mind, please drop a comment on me. It's real important. Hit that like button, smash the subscribe button, and I'll see you guys on the next project.